pass your check ride or I'll pay for it. Join our number one rated online ground school and participate in live mock check rides and interactive written test prep. Visit groundschoolacademy.com to learn more. Hey everyone, Jason Schaffer here of M0A.com and our video on holding pattern entries was one of our most popular videos, but it's so old now, it's due for a serious update as you guys can tell. And that's what we're doing here now. So let's dive into it. Holding pattern entries I know are so tough to understand and I'm going to do my best to break them down into plain English for you. Let's start with some facts about holding patterns. Of course, we have our inbound and our outbound course and some basic facts. Right is a standard holding pattern. Uh, there are two types, time and distance holds. I can hold for time, I can hold for a distance as well. When I reference we're holding for time, the goal for the time is to make that inbound leg that particular time. So if it's one minute legs, they're talking one minute inbound. It doesn't matter how long outbound is. In fact, outbound may have to be 30 seconds to make inbound 60 seconds. You understand? So it doesn't matter what outbound is, it matters what inbound is. On a distance hold, however, though, each leg is going to match. Obviously, the goal is to make the inbound that distance, but to make it that distance, the outbound have to be the same. So uh, time starts over or a beam that fix, 200 knots maximum in a hold, and above 14,000 is 265 for turbojet aircraft. Now, there are three types of entries, direct, teardrop, and parallel. Now, let me let you in on a secret before I show you each of those and how to figure it out. And not a lot of people will tell you this, but air traffic control doesn't care how you get into a hold. They're not going to look at you and say, you know what, Jason, you made a teardrop when you should have made a parallel entry and you're in trouble now. They're not going to care. All ATC cares about is that you stay on the protected side of that hold and follow the appropriate instructions. They don't care how you get into the hold. They care that you stay on the protected side and are following their instructions on the proper inbound course and making the proper turns and everything else. They do care about that. They want you on the protected side. They don't care so much about how you get into it. Your check ride examiner, your instructor, they're going to care about this so that you know how to get into the hole. So let's talk about the three types. First off, in the green area, you'll see the direct entry. If I'm approaching this hold from anywhere in the green area, I can simply make a direct entry. I fly right to the station and just make a direct entry, a straight entry right on into that hold. And either way, I could just make that right turn and enter into my hole. Direct entry, by far the easiest entry to make. Next is the parallel entry, anywhere from that bluish purplish area. We'd come in and we would hit our point, we would parallel our course outbound, and then we'd circle back with a left turn to remain as close to that protected side as possible into our hold with a parallel entry. And then lastly, our smallest space is our teardrop entry. With a teardrop entry coming from that red maroon area, we'd fly through and over our fix, teardrop back with a right hand turn in this case to stay in that protected side to enter into our hold that way. Direct, parallel, and teardrop. Let me show you now how you can master this because it's easy to look on a piece of paper from a top down view and go, yeah, Jason, I can pick out how to enter a hold from that view, but help me when I'm hurtling at 110 knots through the sky in my airplane, how do I visualize those holds? I start with our heading indicator. And in this case, we're on a north heading for this heading indicator, and we receive this radio call. Skyhawk November 23, Mike Zulu, hold southwest of the Ocala VOR on the 210 radial. Maintain 6,000. Expect further clearance in two zero minutes. So here's how I start. Always put your fix in the middle of your heading indicator. Then draw your inbound course from the heading to that VOR that you just drew, that fix you just drew in the middle. In this case, it's 210. So let's draw a line from 210 up to that VOR. We've just now drawn our inbound course. 
From there, I can overlay my right racetrack pattern. How do I know it's the right? Because it's standard, and they didn't tell us. They would tell us it was non-standard. If they don't say anything, we know it's standard. I can put the arrows there to make it a little bit easier for you guys, so you can visualize those right-hand turns. And now you can see, if I was really on this north heading, approaching that, I could make a very easy direct entry into that, couldn't I? I'd hit my fix, I'd make a right turn, and I'd be locked in to my hold just like that. A direct entry is the type of entry I'd make given this radio call. What if I was given this radio call? Skyhawk 23 Mike Zulu, hold northeast of the Ocala VOR on the 030 radial, maintain 6,000, expect further clearance in two zero minutes. Follow the same procedure. Let's put that VOR, let's put that fix right in the middle. Let's draw a line from 030 to that VOR or to that fix. That's our inbound course. Now let's draw that right racetrack pattern here with the arrows. And if I was really on a north, north heading, how would you enter this holding pattern? Well, I would fly right on through my VOR and I would teardrop back around to enter this hold. A teardrop entry is the type of entry I'd make if I received this radio call. And this one, if you said parallel, don't feel bad because this one's actually on the verge. You could make either a parallel or a teardrop. It's kind of right on the cusp of it. For me, a teardrop entry is much easier than a parallel entry. It's just one less turn it makes my life a whole lot easier. So I would choose a teardrop in this case. Let's look at another one. Skyhawk 23 Mike Zulu, hold northwest of the Ocala VOR on the 330 radial. Maintain 6,000, expect further clearance in 20 minutes. Here's your chance. Pause this video real quick if you want to try to practice and work through it. If not, I'm about to reveal that answer. Let's draw our VOR, drop our VOR right into the middle of our heading indicator. Let's draw our inbound course from 330 to that VOR. Let's now put that right racetrack pattern around it here. And if we were approaching on a north heading, heading direct to that VOR, how might you enter this holding pattern? I would make a parallel entry. I'd fly to my VOR. I would parallel it outbound, and then I would circle back, do my best to stay on that protected side to make a nice, normal, parallel entry. Holding patterns are so difficult to understand. It's easy to see a top-down view, so how can we learn using a top-down view? I can use my heading indicator. This is one of my best tips for IFR pilots. If you love these tips, if you love this free content we put out there on YouTube, I know you'll love our number one rated online ground school for private, instrument, and commercial pilot. Groundschoolacademy.com will not only help you pass your written, your knowledge test, not only help you pass and just do all awesome on your check ride. Most importantly, will help make you a safe real world pilot and everything is up to and exceeds ACS guidelines. You guys are going to absolutely love it for private instrument commercial and soon to be CFI course. Enjoy the rest of your day and most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day guys. See ya.